getting ready for an ETDR consultation. So given the limited amount of time for an ETDR session, particularly in the busy season leading up to the deadline for ETDR submittal, it helps to prepare for an ETDR consultation. First, it's important to ensure that the computer that will be used for the online session is as up-to-date as possible. This includes the operating system, any software, um, the ETDR template, and it really helps if the computer system itself has been through a disk cleanup so there's not extraneous digital detritus that might slow the processing in the computer system. In other words, keep your technological tools up to date and high functioning. Make sure that you do not have malware on your machine. If there is, non-functioning files and other anomaly, anomalous behaviors may interrupt the work and may even end the consultation session. You don't want to be spreading malware by not having a well-maintained computer system. If you use research source web bibliography tools, ensure that that is functioning correctly as well. Anything that contributes to the ETDR file is important and everything should be fully functioning. Second, it helps to have read all the documentation for the template used, whether in Word or LaTeX. The consultation will not offer new information to what has already been documented on the K-State Graduate School's ETDR site. The one difference is that the staff person in ITS will be applying the combined knowledge on the particular file. The documentation exists to enable self-service and can save on staff time. Next, um, it helps if you have conducted your own research by Googling any questions you have as well. Um, it helps to read the formal documentation on Microsoft Word. Uh, it helps to be responsible and to be fully informed. The ultimate responsibility for the ETDR resides with the student. Some will try to assign their work to ITS staff in this context, which is not appropriate. So please control for your expectations for others' responsibilities for your work. Third, if you have any unusual phenomena or particular needs uh, that are atypical, be sure to notify the staff ahead of time so they can do the extra research if needed. Sometimes staff will research an issue and share some URLs and those can solve the issue. Make some time to brainstorm questions to be answered during the session. Fourth, make sure that your digital imagery is sufficiently high resolution or high res. For print visuals, these need to be 350 dots per inch or pixels per inch, DPI or PPI, at minimum. Some types of images, if they are highly detailed ones, such as from various microscopes, may need to be 1200 DPI, PPI. Having the images available and ready will be important. Also, make sure that the images are not stretched in terms of aspect ratio the original height-width relationship. Fifth, have you checked in with cases in the profile area to make sure that you have the formal and correct representation of your name there? If not, a formal name change should be put into the registrar's office. Remember that your name appears in the ETDR file name the title page or pages, the copyright page, and so forth. So all name representations should be internally consistent. Those are some ideas for how to prepare prior to the session. So now, what are some tips for how to work during a live session? A typical session runs about an hour to an hour and a half. If the student has the contents in the working template, it only takes a short time 
to identify any other issues that may need to be fixed. If the template has been severely modified or broken, then the student will be asked to move their ETDR contents into an actual working template first before the session can continue. The reason is that a working template may solve many of the problems that the student is having. Making corrections in a broken file may mean a lot of lost time. So the general sequence of a consultation is as follows. There will be some initial questions to help the ITS staff understand the needs of the student for the consultation and to understand their context, their learning domain, their source citation method, and so on. Then there is the setup of the file for analysis so that it's possible to see the field coding. The styles pane is opened so both the student and the staff person can analyze the files functioning. Often a backup copy of the file is saved so that there is a working version that the student can return to if the template is somehow broken during the process or if the student has malware on the machine and the edited file locks up or if the student is typing and accidentally types some inputs that results in the file locking up. Notice that the student's file never leaves his or her machine. All changes that are done are done on the student's machine and by the student's hand. The advice given is accepted or not accepted by the student. The analysis starts from the top of the ETDR file. The ITS staff person will have the current ETDR template opened on their local machine for reference. It may seem petty to focus on smaller or lesser details like punctuation such as on the copyright page, but anything noted is required formatting and reasons for automatic ETDR rejection. So these aren't pet issues by the staff. Necessary changes, changes are usually made live during the session by the student. If there are particular necessary sequences that the student will need to take to address other issues such as captioning, figures, and tables, then the student should take effective notes to remember how to achieve the work. Students should ask any questions that arise during the session. They should be clear about their understandings before moving on. Now, some questions may be left open at the end of the session. Some questions may only be answerable by the faculty advisor or the committee or the subject matter expert advising on the ETDR. So after the session, please do not undo the work done during the session. Please refer to the actual downloaded template to understand what the standards are. ITS staff will generally focus on the formatting only and students are responsible for making changes. If a file is turned back by the graduate school, that is not the end of the world. Students have to correct any formatting issues identified and resubmit. In general, given the demands on staff time, students may have one or two sessions total. In the rare case, a session may go into three hours. That said, many students require these services and putting in one ticket after another after another is usually a sign that the student is not setting aside sufficient time to learn what the ETDR template issues are. ITS staff cannot take responsibility for student work. Their responsibility is to try to balance the needs of all comers. So ITS staff cannot provide free access to technologies um, that students may have to use to achieve their work. Uh, they might be aware of resources, so it can't hurt to ask, however, but it's important to understand that ITS staff cannot just give out free licenses for software. And finally,
finally, if you have suggestions for the ITS staff, please let them know. Having the student perspective is important to this process.